Why do so many Christians attend church on Sunday? In this video, you will uncover one of history's greatest deceptions. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Dustin with Hope Through Prophecy. On this channel, we help you to better understand Bible prophecy and be prepared for the end times. Hundreds of years ago, the Christian world was rocked by scandal. A blasphemous attempt was made to change God's holy law. Before we reveal this bombshell truth, make sure you are subscribed to this channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of our future uploads. Also, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon, where you will receive full access to all of my exclusive vlogs and behind-the-scenes footage for just $3 per month. The link is in the description below. Now let's jump right in. In the Christian world today, there is much confusion about the Bible Sabbath. Many sincere Christians have been deceived into accepting a false Sabbath that was never endorsed by the Bible. Amazingly, the Bible predicted this blasphemous change. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. This mysterious little horn power described in Daniel would actually think to change God's unchangeable law. Before we throw the spotlight on this global deception, let us first consider some truths we have discovered in previous videos. The Sabbath was introduced at creation, at the beginning of this world's history. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. After creating this world, God sanctified or made holy, not just any day of the week, but specifically the seventh day, which lasts from sunset Friday until sunset on Saturday. Not only is the Sabbath a memorial of God's creative power, but it is a sign between Him and His people. And hallow my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. The Sabbath is at the heart of God's eternal Ten Commandment Law. In regards to His law, which He spoke with His own mouth, God tells us, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. What's more, obedience to all of God's commandments, which includes the Sabbath, is the sign that we know God. And hereby we do know that we know Him, if we keep his commandments. God's eternal Ten Commandments were understood by God's people even before the law was given on Mount Sinai. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. We can also see that God's people were aware of the fourth commandment, which describes the Sabbath, even before Moses received the two tablets of stone on Mount Sinai. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord hath said, Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today, and seethe that ye will seethe, and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. This verse is referring to the manna, or heavenly bread, that God provided the Israelites in the wilderness. You will notice that God refers to the Holy Sabbath even before Moses receives the commandments in stone. These verses, including the Sabbath being sanctified during creation week, Abraham obeying the commandments, and the Sabbath being enforced when the Israelites received manna, are all evidences that God's Ten Commandment law, including the Sabbath, is eternal and existed even before the Ten Commandments were revealed on Sinai. In those Ten Commandments, the Sabbath commandment is explicitly described, written in stone by God's own finger. Now let us consider the New Testament. Did Jesus or the Apostles change the Sabbath? 
If such a monumental change to God's law were to take place, surely it would have been a headline topic all throughout the New Testament. To the contrary, Jesus taught just the opposite. He made it crystal clear that all of the Ten Commandments are binding and eternal. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. We also see that it was Jesus' common practice to worship on the Sabbath. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up for to read. Jesus kept his Father's commandments, and he is our example in all things. But perhaps the greatest proof that God's Ten Commandment law, including the Sabbath, can never be changed or taken away, is the very fact that Jesus died on the cross for our sin. You see, Jesus died to pay the penalty for sin, which the Bible defines as the breaking of God's law. His death proved that God will never change His law. This shows that God is righteous. The fact that He sent His own Son to die for us shows that God is love. Yes, it was at the cross that mercy and justice kissed each other. What's more, Jesus expected His followers to be keeping the Sabbath in the future, nearly 40 years after His death. He told His followers, But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. What about the apostles? Did they change the Sabbath? To the contrary, Paul teaches that we must establish the law. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. In fact, it was the apostles' practice to preach on the Sabbath, and both Jews and Gentiles joined them to hear the word of God on this day. Speaking of Paul, the Bible says, And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath, and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. In a previous video, we have learned that passages such as Colossians 2, 16 and 17 are not referring to the seventh-day Sabbath, but to the Old Testament feast Sabbaths, which were shadows of things to come. Please click on the video link above to learn more about this. The Bible identifies the Lord's Day as the Sabbath, not Sunday. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. Finally, God pronounces a special blessing on those who embrace and keep His holy Sabbath day. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. In fact, we learn that the Sabbath will be observed even in heaven. And it shall come to pass, that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. We have seen that neither the apostles, Jesus Christ, or God the Father changed the Sabbath. In fact, there is not a single verse, from Genesis to Revelation, that says the Sabbath was changed from Saturday to Sunday. If the Bible is so clear on this topic, why do so many modern Christians observe Sunday instead of the Sabbath? It is now time, friends. Please brace yourself as I reveal the bombshell answer to this question. In the quotes that follow, you will learn how a worldwide organization in their official teachings and documents have openly revealed that they made this blasphemous change to God's law. The following passage is taken directly from the Convert's Catechism of Catholic Doctrine. 
Question. Which day is the Sabbath day? Answer. Saturday is the Sabbath day. Question. Why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer. We observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church in the Council of Laodicea transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. As you can see, the Catholic Church openly confesses to making this change. What's more, they boldly admit that this change is not supported by the Bible. You may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and you will not find a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. The scriptures enforce the religious observance of Saturday, a day which we never sanctify. Notice that the church even claims to have the power to change God's holy word. Had she not such power, she cannot have done that in which all modern religionists agree with her. She cannot have substituted the observance of Sunday, the first day of the week, for the observance of Saturday, the seventh day, a change for which there is no scriptural authority. Dear friend, does any man or organization truly have the power to change God's holy law? Absolutely not. The Bible says, You shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. Despite this clear Bible teaching, many Christians, perhaps innocently misguided, have accepted a counterfeit day of worship and are breaking the true Sabbath of the Lord. But friends, it wasn't always this way. History reveals that Christians in the early centuries, after Jesus' death and resurrection, still observed the true Bible Sabbath. The primitive Christians had a great veneration for the Sabbath and spent the day in devotion and sermons. We will now consider the events leading up to the official change of the Sabbath. Like many false teachings, it did not happen overnight but rather it was a gradual transition. The Bible warned that this falling away from the truth would take place. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. This prophecy was clearly fulfilled in history. The apostolic church stood firm and pure and when the second and third generation Christians came along, we see evidence of compromise and apostasy. It should be noted that during the first centuries of Christianity, Sunday began to be regarded not as a commandment, but as a special holiday for Christians. In fact, the Sabbath, the seventh day of the week, was observed in addition to Sunday, the first day of the week, for quite some time. Despite falsely identifying Sunday as the Lord's Day, this following quote reveals this practice. The ancient Sabbath did remain and was observed together with the celebration of the Lord's Day by the Christians of the East above 300 years after our Savior's death. So, if there is no biblical support for Sunday being sacred, then how did this practice get started? There are two major reasons why Sunday began to be honored by many Christians in the first centuries. For one, the Christians, especially in Rome, wanted to distance themselves from the Jews who consistently observed the Seventh-day Sabbath. There was much prejudice and conflict between the Jews and the Romans, and Gentile Christians did not want to identify themselves in any way with the Jews. So these early Gentile Christians began to meet on Sunday, not as a commandment, but as a way to distinguish themselves from the Sabbath-keeping Jews. Secondly, there was a special attachment to Sunday in the Roman Empire. In fact, this day was considered to be sacred, not based on the Bible, but based on the widespread pagan practices in the empire. You see, Sunday was the day in which the pagans 
worshipped the sun god. The Roman Emperor Constantine is described as follows. Like the majority both of his contemporaries and also more particularly of his predecessors on the imperial throne, Constantine was warmly disposed towards sun worship. Recognizing this popular pagan practice of sun worship, Constantine enacted the first official Sunday law in AD 321. Here is the decree of this pagan emperor. On the venerable day of the sun, let the magistrates and people residing in the cities rest, and let all workshops be closed. In the country, however, persons engaged in agriculture may freely and lawfully continue their pursuits. In making this law, Constantine sought to unite the vast Roman Empire, which at that time was filled with both pagans and Christians. This civil decree by Constantine was the first law of any kind that banned labor on Sunday. Prior to this, it was considered perfectly legal to work on Sunday, as there is no Bible mandate that prohibits work on the first day of the week. You will also notice that Constantine does not attempt to provide any biblical support for this Sunday law. He simply acknowledges Sunday as a heathen festival. The Sunday holiday, based on the worship of the sun, was widely accepted by the pagan world, and it continued to slowly but surely make inroads into Christianity. Now we will see the next major step in the attempt to change the Sabbath to Sunday. This worldwide deception would now be carried forward by the church itself. First, we can see that Sunday was officially declared to be the Lord's Day, not in the Bible, but by the Council of Laodicea. In the year 325, Sylvester, Bishop of Rome, changed the title of the first day, calling it the Lord's Day. At the next Council of Laodicea, we can witness the very first religious law regarding the keeping of Sunday. Christians shall not Judaize and be idle on Saturday, but they shall work that day. But the Lord's Day they shall especially honor, and as being Christians, shall, if possible, do no work on that day. So here we see the official change of the Sabbath to Sunday by the church itself. This change allowed the church to grow in numbers, wealth, and power as heathens who worshiped the sun god were welcomed into the church. Eventually, through future councils and church mandates, the position of Sunday was gradually exalted and Sabbath was slowly devalued in importance. This time of history was known as the Dark Ages. The people were kept in ignorance of the Bible and were directed to rely on the priests to interpret the Bible for them. Bible truths were passed down by word of mouth, as the Bible was often not available in the language of the people. As can be expected, many Bible teachings such as the Sabbath became corrupted or lost sight of. I hope you can see, friend, that the transition from Saturday to Sunday was a subtle transition, a slow erosion of Bible truth, and was based on the counsels and teachings of men, and not the Bible. However, through the Dark Ages, there were still Christians who held on to the truths of God's Word, including the Bible Sabbath. An example of such a group is the Waldenses, who fled into the Alps of Italy Despite being hunted and persecuted by the Roman Church, these faithful Christians held firm to their faith in that rocky fortress of the Alps. Eventually, the Protestant Reformation burst forth throughout Europe, opening the Bible to the hearts and minds of the people and exposing the false doctrines promoted by the apostate Roman Church. However, error is often not easily shaken as it can become entrenched in culture and tradition. Many Christians today continue to honor a day that is not blessed by God and are violating God's express command to keep the Sabbath holy. The Catholic Church openly states, deny the authority of the church 
and you have no adequate or reasonable explanation or justification for the substitution of Sunday for Saturday in the third Protestant fourth commandment of God. The church is above the Bible, and this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. And if Protestants would follow the Bible, they would worship God on the Sabbath day in keeping Sunday. They are following a law of the Catholic Church. Friends, it couldn't be more clear. The Catholic Church verifies what history has revealed. They changed the Sabbath and blasphemously claim to be above the Bible. Do human beings have the power to change the Sabbath or any of God's commands? What does the Bible say? But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. God reveals that following man-made replacements for His commandments is vain or worthless worship. Like Cain's offering of fruit instead of a lamb, it is not acceptable to God. God is righteous, holy, and particular in His requirements. Friends, it comes down to this. Will you follow man or will you follow God? Will you simply follow the crowd or will you follow the truth, no matter how unpopular it may be? And remember, if we break even one of the Ten Commandments, we are guilty of breaking them all. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. And while we are saved by grace, we will be judged by our obedience. Referring to the Ten Commandments, James says, So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. After all, obedience to God's commandments is the sign that we truly know Him. And hereby we do know that we know Him, if we keep His commandments. He that saith, I know Him, and keepeth not His commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. And God promises an eternal blessing to those who obey all ten of His commandments. Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Friends, I know this topic of the Sabbath may be new to you. I know it was for me. But remember, God only holds you responsible for the light that you have. He shows mercy when we are ignorant, but expects us to obey the truth when we learn it. And God's requirements are always for our blessing and best interest. In this video, we have seen from the Bible that all of God's Ten Commandments, including the Sabbath, are eternal. We have seen that neither God the Father, Jesus, nor the Apostles ever changed the Sabbath. We have seen from history that it was the apostate Catholic Church that boldly and blasphemously claimed to change God's holy day. Now the choice is yours. Will you follow the Word of God or the teachings of man? Will you honor God's holy Sabbath day or accept a man-made counterfeit? Friend, Jesus is appealing to you today. If you love me, keep my commandments. What if you have a job on the Sabbath? Friend, make a decision to follow Jesus. Tell your employer about this powerful new truth that you have learned and let them know that you can work on any day of the week except the Bible Sabbath, from sunset Friday to sunset on Saturday. Dear friend, God will honor that decision. He will work miracles on your behalf. Some have lost their jobs for this choice, but they have saved their soul. God will always provide something better and take care of all of your needs when you put Him first. The First Amendment also protects your right to observe the Sabbath, and a letter can be written to your employer explaining this. If you would like to find a church in your area that teaches Bible truth and worships on the Sabbath, please text HOPE to 50597. Dear friend, what choice will you make? 
Will you be loyal to your Savior who laid down his life for you? If this is your decision, please write in the comment section below, Lord, I choose to keep your Sabbath day holy. Praise God for your decision, friend. Trust in Him for the strength to keep the Sabbath and all of His commandments. This video is part of a full playlist called Hope Through Prophecy. I encourage you to watch this entire playlist in order as it will help you to understand Bible prophecy and prepare for the soon return of Jesus Christ. Remember friends, keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith.